Good day my fellow nerds and welcome back to another Dragon's Dogma 2 video. Today we'll be ranking all of the weapons available to the warrior archetype. So with that, let's sharpen those great swords and polish those great hammers and let's get nerdy. In at 14th place is the two-hander, a common greatsword, sturdy and easily handled, and is oft the first hilt grasped by warriors in training. As such, it is the starting equipment when selecting the warrior archetype, but for some reason if you can't find a better version or just like to gimp yourself, another one can quite easily be found within a chest inside Trevor Mine or purchased from Roderick Smithy in Vernworth. Next up in 13th place is Steel Urchin, a steel hammer crowned with spikes, capable of gouging foes even as the sheer weight of the blow knocks them to the dirt. In order to get your hands on a steel urchin, all you need to do is visit Roderick Smithy in Vernworth. In at number 12 is the greatsword designed for fighting on the front lines, the Warblade with a tip custom forged for deadly effect. The Warblade is purchasable from two locations in Dragon's Dogma 2, namely Roderick Smithy in Vernworth, as well as Arwen's Arms in Bakpatal. In at number 11 is the ferocious greatsword Life Taker, a sturdy greatsword fashioned of three distinct blade cores, with its heft lending each blow overwhelming power. Lifetaker cannot be purchased from any shops within the game, however can be obtained as a reward for completing the Baron's final lesson, as well as dropped by skeletons at a rough rate of 2%. However, it can also be obtained through exploration, at the collapsed mine situated northwest of Vernworth. Accessing the treasure chest however requires ascending or levitating a platform just ahead of an iron gate defended by Saurian sentries. Breaking into the top 10 is Flamburge, a greatsword with a saw-like blade that can rend flesh, organs and bone with equal ease. In order to get your hands on the Flamburge, you can go and farm skeleton lords as well as lost mercenaries each of which dropped the Flamburge at a rough estimated rate of 17.86 and 16.67%. If that sounds like way too much grind, then you can just go and purchase it from Celeste Smithy at the Checkpoint Rest Town, as well as Arwen Arms in Bak Batal. Next up in 9th place is the hammer designed to both bludgeon and claw, especially effective against Cyclopean foes, the aptly named Eye Crusher. The Eye Crusher Great Hammer can be obtained through exploration and awaits those worthy arisen adventuring into Dead End Curve and is nestled close to the ogre that rests within. If you're looking for a little bit of an easier route, you can also go and purchase it from Celeste Smithy in the Checkpoint Rest Town. In at number 8 is Ogre's Bane. Described as a greatsword commissioned by a wealthy merchant, whose kin was abducted. It was forged to extract vengeance, and with that the blade cuts ogre flesh especially deeply. Ogre's Bane can be obtained through farming Grim Ogres and Lost Mercenaries, both dropping this iconic weapon at a rough estimated rate of 17%. However, Ogre's Bane is also a guaranteed drop from bandits wielding it in the Aromatic Sanctuary. This is also the case for the Grim Ogre that resides within the Coral Snake Hideout Cave after fulfillment of the Mercy Among Thieves quest. Next up in 7th place is the Greatsword Adept at both slicing and stabbing attacks. It is the chosen blade of a hero who would challenge fearsome foes. Of course I'm talking about Griffic Victory. Griffith Victory cannot be obtained through exploration and is not dropped by any enemies within Dragon's Dogma 2, but can quite easily be purchased from Arwen's Arms in Bak Batal. Sixth place in the ranking goes to Black Matter, a great hammer of specially refined metal, weighty in the extreme with concussive force to match, 
and is described as a fine choice for those with muscle to spare. Black Matter is one of the few weapons on the warrior list that cannot be purchased from any shop or smithy, but rather can only be found through exploration, and is located within a chest in the ancient battleground, at the top of the castle guarded by a cyclops. Now in 5th place, and now it starts to get serious, is Wounded Heart. A greatsword that cuts as deeply as its sinister aspect suggests, and is believed to have been wrought from the flesh of the dragon's own heart. The Wounded Heart greatsword can only be obtained through purchase, and is available at the Volcanic Island Armory in the Volcanic Island Camp, as well as Gustafa after completing Put a Spring in Thy Step. Brockus Smithy also has this after completing Steeled Resolve, Blazing Fury. And then within the endgame, it also becomes available for purchase at Roderick's, Grisha's, Celeste's and Arwen's Arms. From here on out, it starts to get a little bit more tricky based on the enemies you will face at the time of obtaining these weapons and the likely physical and elemental resistances these enemies will have at that point in time. So get ready to fight me in the comments. In at number 4 is Dragon's Bite. A great sword worthy of its namesake, with an awe-inspiring blade as sharp as the dragon's fangs itself. The more harm the wielder takes, the stronger it becomes. Even though Dragon's Bite has the highest strength stat in the game, in my opinion, the additional damage brought from other weapons on this list that have enchantments and or a higher knockdown stat will ultimately result in more damage over time. Nonetheless, Dragon's Bite only becomes available in the endgame and is available for purchase at the Bay Wayside Shrine in exchange for 110 Worm Life Crystals. Entering onto the podium in third place is Cinderspine, a spiked great hammer imbued with the power of flame. Each strike bludgeons, lacerates and burns, ensuring the suffering of one's foes is long indeed. Cinderspine is not available for purchase at any of the shops or smithies, however can only be found through exploration and is located within a chest deep within the mountain base cave. And in order to access this, you'll need to leap, jump or levitate over a gap to reach this long forgotten treasure. In at number 2, the second best weapon for the warrior in DD2 is Dragon's Flight. An axe-like greatsword modelled after a dragon in flight, and is known to be especially effective against the draconic species. Dragon's Flight is only available for purchase at the endgame from Roderick Smithy, Grisha's Armory, Celeste Smithy, Arwen's Arms and Brockus Smithy. And the number one weapon for the warrior in my opinion and based on my calculations is Cyclopean Thunder. Described as a hammer crackling with the fury of a thunderstroke, each mighty swing is a bolt from the heavens. His lightning enchantment never dulls. Sporting a 150% lightning enchantment, which is very rarely resisted, as well as being especially effective against Draconic Kind, I couldn't put it anywhere else. Cyclopean Thunder cannot be purchased with DD2, however can be obtained in two other ways. First of all, it can be located in a chest inside Dark Beast's Den. And secondly, it can also be found to the east of the Volcanic Island Camp, where the separate paths converge on the North Tower. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate each and every view. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like, subscribe to the channel, where I cover more games that you love. But if you do or you don't, until I see you again, stay nerdy.